Hi, I'm Don. Today, we're going to do tabletop standard painting to golden lemon standard. We are painting with red grass, vallejos, and cuttlefish colors. And also, we're painting a miniature from RM Printable. RM Printable is a Patreon partner of mine and they have a huge selection of miniatures and even terrain. So watch as we turn this RM Printable miniature into this. Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. This channel is supported by all these awesome brands and this channel won't be possible without my awesome patrons. So it's your first time to paint miniatures. Miniature painting is super fun and you only need like a couple of brushes and some good paints to start painting miniatures. Of course, you need the miniature. <laughs> I'm assuming you know how to thin your paints, you know how to use your brushes, and you know your paints. So let's start with some tips, a little some painting tips as you watch this video. Also, I'll try to convince you that painting beyond tabletop standard, beyond slop chop is easier than you think. So you have your brushes, you have your paints, and of course you have your miniature already. And what is the most important thing you do before you paint the miniature? The very first thing to do is choose your colors. Choose your color scheme. This one, the miniature that we're painting is a woodland, um, woodland elf. So it's basically like green armor and then some tufts and green stuff and wood. So it's a woodland elf. So we need a lot of greens. So pre-select all your like basic colors for the miniature. And this is very important because like finding colors or finding the paints that you want to use all of a sudden while painting the miniature, kind of like it will kill your momentum. And once like the painting momentum is killed, like you have to find like a certain color and you're having a hard time finding that color that is uh, like um, a super momentum killer so you really have to pre-select your colors so that your painting session is super fluid and you have or at the very least you have easy access to all your paints that's why when you look at my workbench my painting table i have like not all but most of my paints or at least my fab paints are in front of me so that when i suddenly feel like using a specific color it's easy access and it won't kill my momentum my second tip would be to paint like the bottom like the most bottom part of a miniature like for example you saw that i painted the hair first well, basically, I paint the skin first and then on top of the skin is the hair. So I paint the hair and then after painting the hair, I painted like the small leaves on top of the hair. In that manner, you could be sloppy with the skin. I mean, you could paint a bit like some excess on the sides. Then you clean it up by painting the hair and then you clean, you, you basically paint the whole hair, even the leaves on top and then you paint pick the leaves and paint it afterwards so in that way you're just focused like on painting per layer you don't really have to be super meticulous with every part of the model you're just you know that you could correct mistakes as you go like upwards or at the higher like highest part of the model and you could like go back and clean up some errors and stuff like that so don't be just relax just paint the base colors as cleanly as you can but you don't have to be super like meticulous with every paint or every color 
Another tip is to not be too focused on specific methods. Like if you're painting via slop chop, you could actually go back and paint some areas, especially the details with just basic layering. And you could go back to using contrast paints again to add shades and stuff. So basically, you don't really need to stick to a specific painting method. You just need to focus on painting all of the base colors of all the elements of the miniature. Now you can see in the video we're like in the middle of the ugly stage where just like we painted like the base colors of the armor parts and the skin is too dark and then a bit of painting on the horns and now we're painting a bit of layering on the wood base like the wooden base the trunk the cut trunk and then we're just painting different brown so that we create a bit more texture and volume to those parts of the model. Another tip is to wick your brush. Some people use tissue paper or towel. I use my denim apron and sometimes, or not really sometimes, but most of the time, you could see I kind of wick the brush on the wet palette already, making sure that I just have enough amount of paint on the brush so that I have maximum control. Base colors can be the actual base colors or medium tone colors. Like for example, here the horn, you could paint it with deck tan and do washes and you're done. But with this one, I plan to do layering later so that we could, I could show you that it's easy to push the painting into more than tabletop standard. But with this one, I decided to paint with darker base colors so that I would have room for more layering. So once you've painted all of the base colors, basically all of the colors that you think should be painted on the miniature, you're basically done. That's tabletop standard already. In my opinion, tabletop standard or just painting the base colors is actually the hardest part. So I think tabletop standard can be the hardest part or is the hardest part, especially for me. And especially if the miniature has so many different elements in just one model. Tabletop standard means you have to paint all those belts, all those buckles, all those tiny little details like leather pouches. Even if you're just painting the base colors, that can be very time consuming so once you've painted all of the elements of the model all the buckles leather parts the hair the skin and all those stuff now you could elevate and push your painting into more than tabletop standard but first let's talk about golden lemon standard or display level ish painting standard Okay, so let me try to explain it in the simplest manner that I can. So for example, you're painting olive green. So basically, the more darker colors that you paint before you go or you before you reach olive green, and the more lighter colors that you paint on top of olive green, basically it means that you're pushing for display level-ish standard. Simply put, the more colors that you use before and after olive green, the more color depth you have and supposedly you have more contrast and of course you have more volume. In my opinion, it doesn't matter how you apply these base colors, how you apply the shades, and how you apply the highlights. You could apply the shades with an airbrush, you could apply the shades with oil paints, which are easier because you could like wipe it off if you're not happy with the result, and you could apply like more shades with contrast paints or with glaze paints like cuttlefish colors. The method of painting and the type of paint you're using to produce more volume, more color depth, and more contrast doesn't matter. 
it's just a matter of like trying to reach where you want your model to finish like you want it more than tabletop standard in my opinion just use contrast paints to add shades and add a bit more highlights it's way better than just painting the base colors already so it doesn't have to be very complicated as long as you're having fun and you're enjoying the process now you see in the video we're painting more highlights the key the main trick to painting highlights is to paint really small areas as the paints get lighter So you have to limit like the luminosity or the brightness of your highlights if you can paint tiny highlights. Because if you're painting highlights but you're kind of like heavy handed, you are not comfortable with painting tiny highlights yet, do not paint like very bright highlights because they will look really big on the miniature and they will not look as good. There are two basic things that will limit your highlights. One is if you're painting non-shiny stuff in the miniature or you're painting very shiny material. Now we enter the flip-flop stage. Well, I call it the flip-flop stage but it's basically finishing touches. For example, I overdid the painting of the highlights and like everything is highlighted. The intensity of the highlights on the skin is the same as the highlights on the armor parts and it's not looking too good. Now you need to add shades. You could use contrast paints or washes. Just make sure that your brush is not loaded with too much paint. And then you could filter down or glaze down all those excessive highlights so that you have you get more interest and you get more volume. Basically, the flip-flop stage shows you that you could paint highlights and then paint shades and paint highlights as you see fit. So it's not a linear process as long as you get to where you want. Now it's time to thank all my awesome patrons. I have a like a bronze, a silver tier, and you see here my gold tier level, platinum tier level, my palladium tier level, and of course my Patreon partners. This channel won't be possible without them. Now we are done. So basically, let's wrap up. Let's summarize the tips. One is to choose your color so that like finding colors will not kill your momentum and apply the base colors as cleanly as you can. But make sure you paint like the bottom layers first, the skin and then the hair and then stuff that is on top of the hair. So basically, you clean up as you go. You clean up the painting and once you make sure that the base colors are cleanly painted then it's so much easier to like go to golden lemon standard painting so seriously painting the base colors of all the different elements in one miniature is like the hardest part but once you finish that you have a really nicely painted miniature with all the base colors like applying washes adding more shades painting more highlights is way easier and thus you could produce golden lemon painting standard so that's it paint your first miniature Paint the base colors and then spend a couple more hours and play around with shades and highlights and you might be surprised that you'll produce really good painting. That's it Pansit! I hope you like this video. Again, thanks to RM Printable for this really cool Woodland Elf miniature.